Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to another video of Not Perfect Zen. I'm happy to be with you today. Um, I am continuing with my videos for my 102 Tangles of Zentangled Poster. And if you're new to this playlist, uh, I learned about Zentangle through the 102 Tangles of Zentangle poster. That's the first thing that I saw. I was immediately fascinated by it and um, haven't stopped loving it <laughs> since that first day. So I'm going through that poster and identifying all of the patterns. And creating videos for almost all of them, not necessarily all, and I'm not going to do all of these today, but I wanted to show you that on the tiles that I'm going to show you that these patterns are on there, okay? So we are going to need, if you have a graphic one, that would be nice, but you don't have to have it. Uh, Micron 01 will work. Micron PN might be even better because we're going to fill in some wide areas of patterns. Um, we'll have a graphite pencil, a blending stump, also known as a tortillon. I might use my kneaded eraser. And we will be using a Zentangle three and a half inch white tile. Okay, so there we go. And if you happen to create a tile and put it on social media, I would love it if you would use this at BBL underscore Tangles to tag me so that I can see your work. I just love seeing what you do. Okay, let me give you an idea. I, I know you see it in the beginning, but um, this is the pattern that I've been playing with for the last week or two, and it is called Vermal. And these other patterns that I have on this are striping, printant, jetties. Again, this is called vermal. And this is hollabaugh. And vermal has been my focus. <laughs> I just think it's fun. There's a lot that you can do with it. Um, I have it in a 5 by 7 sketchbook that I created using a disc bound system and there is a link in the description if you're interested in how I did that. So there's one. Um, I enjoyed going to the Mosaic app and looking at tiles in there and this is one of the ways that you can do vermal. I thought was fun. You can actually put patterns inside of those shapes. Um, this is another one that I did. And these are the three patterns that I'm going to show you today. Okay, so let's get started. I hope you have fun with this one. We're going to start with our three and a half inch Zentangle tile. If you don't have any of these supplies, you can use whatever you have on hand. I'm going to zoom in before I forget to do it, like I have in the last couple of videos, and I apologize for that. Okay, I do appreciate the, the Zentangle method. I'm grateful for uh, YouTube and that I can use that as a platform to share with you today. Okay, we're going to do our four corner dots. And these don't have to be in any particular distance from each edge. And you don't have to do straight lines. You can do wavy lines. This is just a 
a way to put a quick border and get started. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is put just kind of a easy division across here with a little bit of a curve. Or you can do it straight across, whatever works for you. Okay, so that's our string. Hopefully you can see that. I'm not doing it dark. Let me do it a little bit darker in case you can't see it. Okay. And then I'm going to start with my Micron PN. And I'm going to do across here the pattern called Snail. And in... just lost my pencil. Hang on there a second. Okay, in the step outs from Zentangle, you start with, it's very much like print on. Okay, it's a spiral. And you just come around. You can just leave it like that. You could put a little bit of weight on the end of it, whatever you would like to do. And then they go to the top and start again, and then come back around, touch that one, and then do your spiral again, okay? I have found that when I try to get my little spiral to touch, sometimes it, to me, it looks a little odd. So, if you want, just make your spiral come around, come close. It's okay if you leave a little space in there. That's my point, okay? Because I tend to do that a lot on mine. Okay, so we're going to start here and put our first spiral. Mine end up being kind of odd shaped, and that's okay. I don't do perfect art. Just relax and enjoy what you're doing. Okay, come close to that first spiral that you did, but it doesn't have to touch. If you can get it to look good, then go ahead and do it. But I'm going to let mine be just a little bit away from it. Okay, so again, we're starting at the top, making a spiral, and then just coming in, and stop, go to the top of the next one, spiral around. Okay, again, this is snail. I saw the 102 Tangles poster at a community college where I was taking a basket weaving class. And I was immediately attracted to it, took a photo of it, and went home and found the word Zentangle on the poster and looked it up and have been addicted to it ever since. Okay, so went all the way across with our little snails. And then what we're gonna do is in between these, we're gonna put like a little V that follows that curve. And then just kind of a little bit of a rounded top. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing up here. A V with a little bit of a curve at the top and fill that in. Okay, so we're going to do that all the way across. I have really enjoyed going through this uh, 102 Tangles poster. 
I'm not going to do a video for every pattern, just like I showed you some of the patterns, and I plan to provide a list. I don't have a website, but um, I can put a photo of the list on my YouTube channel, on my community tab, and I will let you know when I do that. Okay, so just little V's with a bump on top. And I'm not worried about trying to make these look exactly the same all the way across. I've been doing Zentangle full time pretty much since the beginning of 2018 and I was very worried about my work and not excited to post it on the internet because I didn't feel it looked good. Please don't worry about your work and how it compares to other people. Although I still do it, I have to admit, I still do it, but just enjoy the Zentangle method. Okay, the next thing that we do is we're going to put an aura around the outside of this. And I try to keep the distance the same. If it's not, it's okay. I don't see snail used very often. And so with these videos, I'm trying to show you some patterns that you probably don't see very often. And especially show you a few that are not published. Uh, certified Zentangle teachers have what we call a Zenthology, and there are some patterns in there that are not published. But it's okay for me to show you those until Zentangle decides to publish them. We just finished the Project Pack 21, and Zentangle released a few more of their newer videos, and that makes, I believe, almost 180 Zentangle Headquarters patterns. That's pretty cool. Okay, there we go. That is the pattern snail. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you is the vermal. Now, vermal can be just shapes. It could be letters. Uh, this was supposed to be a Z. When I did this one, I was putting Zen and then just uh, shapes. And then here I have Zen Love. So just put anything that you would like to put. What I'm going to do for this tile is I'm going to put the basic strokes from Zentangle. So we have a dot, a line, a curve, an S curve, and an orb. And there are patterns out there that use all five of these, okay? But dot, line, curve, S, and orb. So I'm going to use this side. And this is where a graphic one can come in handy. It has a nice, thick end. But if you don't have that, you can still use a PN, 
an 01 or whatever you have. That's just going to show you real quick. If I were to use this graphic one, this is just an S curve. And then fill it in. Okay. We could do a dot. We can do just a straight line. And fill it in. We're trying to make it kind of thick. And like I showed on this one, if you want to make them even bigger, you can. And put patterns inside. But for this, I'm going to do it the way they show us in the step outs. Um, let me switch to my other pen to show you that even with uh, a PN, it's easy enough to do this. Let's do just a C curve here. And then fill it in. The PN is a plastic nib, and so it's a little bit easier to use it and not mess up the tip. So let's make this one kind of thick. That's our orb. And I'm trying to get it kind of straight. <laughs> All right, so we have our dot line, C curve, an S, an O, or an orb. And then just put anything else that you would like. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Always encourage you to make this your art. Okay. Add another dot over here. Well, I see a face. <laughs> okay, let's put another dot up here. And then I'm going to switch to my O1 and put auras around these. And you can just go to each one and do it once and then just keep filling it in. Or if you have a lot of space, go ahead and put a couple of them down. And my auras are not perfect, but don't worry about them. Just take your time, come around, and then meet up with your first one. I'm going to go ahead and go around this one again. And I wasn't really happy with the first ones of these that I did, but as with all of my tiles, if I feel like I'm not happy with it, I'll put it aside and come back later that day or even the next day and look at it. And I always feel better about it. We are our own worst critics, and that's a shame. What's fun about going to Zentangle meetings where there are other people doing the same tile is when you put them all down on a table as a mosaic and start looking at all the beautiful art that's there. And then you try to find your own tile. It's hard. <laughs> At seminar, it was hard to find my tile again, and I was worried that mine didn't look good, but I shouldn't have because all of our tiles were very much the same. Okay?
As with all of our tiles, move your tile to keep your hand comfortable. Remember to relax. Remember to breathe. Okay, and then just go over, or I'm sorry, aura around all of these again. Okay. Just take your time and enjoy what you're doing. You can make this go behind the one next to it. Okay. Okay, see how this one has kind of slipped behind the snail. And I'm also going a little bit past that uh, border that we put on there. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, so I have a border. I'm gonna darken it a little bit so you can see. Okay. So if it goes past the border, it's okay. Borders and strings are suggestions. Okay. Let's do this one. You can see that my lines are shaky sometimes. And that's okay. So I'm just gonna keep adding these lines. When you get to a certain point, you can keep adding the lines all around it. Okay, like I did on this one. I just kept putting auras around that or you can add auras for a while and then just start filling in those spaces with other shapes. So let's do that. I'm going to come around like this and just follow that shape. Okay, and then I'm just going to put another aura inside. Okay, we can go around and do the same thing here. All right, we can go here. Came a little close there. Just play what if? What if I do this? We're just filling in spaces. Okay. put just little dots or something in spaces where something won't fit or just leave it blank. Okay. 
These are patterns that you could put anywhere. And what's nice is you don't have to worry about certain steps because it's so easy to follow. Again, you don't have to put letters. You can put whatever you like. All right, oops, lost my pen. I'm gonna put a little bit of something down in there. Let's put a little group of orbs around here. So just play with it. How about a little dot? All right. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is called Kathy's Dilemma. And that one has been retired by Zentangle and it was replaced by Triple E. But it's still a fun pattern, and it starts out very similar to Crescent Moon. I knew I was gonna forget that. Okay, and with Crescent Moon, we start on whatever line or space we have and do that little crescent, but for Kathy's Dilemma, we're going to put triangles. I'm going to move a little bit. Put my next triangle. Okay. And then I'm going to come along this. We're not trying to keep them a certain size or spacing. I'm just filling in around this area as if I had like a string line. And I think I'm just gonna put a little one in here. Let's go up this way. Very simple pattern. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a perfect triangle either. So now let's put some triangles in the spaces that we have left. Just fit in what you can. This one, I think I'll come down this way. What's nice about this compared to Triple E is uh, with Triple E, I'm always trying to make sure I keep my triangles looking right. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. But with Kathy's Dilemma, I'm not worried about shape or how they're gonna fit together. We're just gonna keep adding triangles where we see a place to put them. Okay, you could put a little one in here if you wanted. Doesn't have to be a particular size. Okay, so we just filled that space with triangles. And the next step is you're gonna round each of these corners. Okay, super simple. You can just put it straight across or round it a little bit. Okay. 
And I don't know the history of this pattern for why it's called Kathy's Dilemma. Because it was never published, there wasn't anything mentioned. With the newer patterns, you get the, the in, information in the newsletter from Zentangle. And if you watched the latest project pack, those were some pretty incredible Zentangle-inspired art. And it was really cool because they used regular patterns and turned them botanical and gave them magical names. It was really fun. I love listening to Rick and Maria and Molly and Martha when they do their videos and when they describe how they came up with their ideas. It's always fun. But this project pack was different. <laughs> I loved it. All right. Um, if you're new to my channel, I don't speed up my videos. So if this is going too slow for you, you can speed it up. You can fast forward. I also don't put music behind my videos. Uh, I tried it once or twice and it was a fail. <laughs> so I'm happy to just leave it nice and quiet for you. Occasionally you get to hear my dog in the background, but she's sleeping. Her name is Coco. Okay, almost done. I'm trying to not hurry. If you take your time on this, because this is so repetitive, I find it to be very relaxing. And I'm trying to hurry so that I don't bore you too much with this, but when you're doing it for yourself, just take your time. Okay, and the other thing that they do in the step outs is just occasionally add a little dot. Oops, there's one I missed. Okay, let's put a dot in the corner. All right, there we go. So now for shading. So I'm gonna take my graphite pencil and I'm gonna go along the outside of the snail. I'm trying to make sure that my pencil touches that line, that R line. We don't want space in between like that, okay? Because it's very noticeable when you start softening that shadow. It's important to have it touch the line. And sometimes I go over the line and that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around. I'm not going to do any shading inside. As far as snail, I'm not going to add anything to that. I'm not sure what would be the best thing, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm 
Okay. So coming all the way around to where we started. And then I'm going to get my tortillon blending stuff. And then I'm just going to soften that. Okay, little circles. You're pushing the graphite into the paper and eliminating that edge that might be there. And when we do this, it makes it look like snail is kind of floating above these other patterns. And see, we have gone outside that borderline, and that's okay. Oop. And I'm trying to keep my blending stump on its side. That's one of the reasons that they're so short, is that you can hold them inside your hand and let them be kind of flat and using this flat part instead of coming straight down on it. If you do happen to use your tortillon the way that I usually do, and you end up with it kind of like that, <laughs> I just pushed it down like that so that I could show you then you can use a large paper clip, slip it inside, and push it back out. Okay? So there we have that one. For Vermal, what I did on some of mine was I just went to one of these auras and added a little bit of graphite. Not the one right next to our shape, but one that's kind of in between. And I like how that looked. Just find one of the auras if you want to do this, or leave it the way it is. Okay, I'm going to come out to this aura. And I'm adding just a little bit of graphite. Okay, I'm not going to do it on these other shapes that we put in there. Play a game with your tile. What if I do this? What if I don't? <laughs> and by doing that over the years, I have learned what I do like and what I don't. Okay, a little bit around here. And then we're just gonna use that tortillon, the very tip. And just soften that. And you can look at mine and see if you want to do that to yours. I just liked how it uh, made these stand out a little bit more. And then for this one, oops, I see that I missed a corner. I'm sure some of you noticed that. <laughs> okay, I don't see that I missed any others. Um, I'm not sure how you would actually shade this. So if you wanted to, you could just come down this side and just darken 
the border that we initially put on there and soften that. And then we already have it over here, okay? The other thing that I did on some of mine was I put a little bit of shading in between here, but I think I'm just gonna leave that one the way that it is. Okay, now we're gonna add our chop. And I think I'm gonna put mine just right over here next to these. Here's my L. B. B. And I would encourage you to put the pattern names on the back. And for this, we used Vermal. Kathy's Dilemma, and Snail. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I thought it was fun. Uh, I always worry about what patterns I'm going to put together, but when you stop worrying and you just do it, it turns into fun and a good meditation. All right, thank you again for joining me today. Uh, would appreciate it if you would hit the like button if you liked it. And if you have not subscribed, I hope that you will. And I hope that you'll come back again. Let me know if you ever have any questions. I always read all of my comments and respond to them. If you, again, put your work on social media, I appreciate it if you would tag me with BBL Tangles. And uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. Bye.